Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. These are the babies that were born in June. They're getting to be a little bit more sizable, so I'm stepping them up to a little bit larger uh, food item. Yes, there we go. Um, these two right here are eating frozen thawed geckos, as you can see. Uh, the third one of the group born in June started right off on pinks. That's like amazing and uh, actually uh, um, actually it's a win because um, you know geckos are difficult to obtain and uh, expensive. Um, I bought 150 house geckos and it cost almost uh, four hundred dollars. Um, and with the way things are going with the cost of the layer I'm going to have to downsize the collection even further because uh, things are just getting too expensive and my YouTube revenue is is really getting low. So I'll move the sticks so this one isn't blocked. This is another one that likes to eat uh, geckos which is fine because I got them. Oh, we have a shedding. Are you going to be a little squirrely, huh? Come on. Come on, focus on the food, not on the skate. There we go. That'll fill your belly. Now, the reason why we're doing this today, it's Labor Day weekend and such. Um, I'm going to come back and uh, Lori and I are going to clean cages tomorrow. These guys need a substrate change. These guys up here, which were born a year ago in May, um, these are, are quite sizable already and need uh, a cage uh, upgrade uh, to a larger uh, size. Mm. I wish someone would buy these so I could uh, uh, clear the space. I'm not breeding any this year because you know I've got a number of adults, a number of mm, juveniles that are breeding age and I've got these that are growing up. So let's catch a little bit more film of Mr. Sandworm here, the Angolan garter snake uh, uh, eating his, uh, his gecko actually making pretty quick work of it. I think the legs sticking out will slow him down to some degree. Yes, we're watching you. Well, I didn't bring my phone with me, so I can't take a still, still photo, but... Oh, there we go. We got the tail going up the back of the cage. This is, this is a snake classic. Uh, they sort of want to back up in order to eat as they go forward. Uh, uh, it's pretty odd. Well, it looks like you didn't shed that entire tail section. We might have to do something mean like throw you in a bucket of water to loosen that up and uh, uh, let you crawl through the substrate and take it off yourself. But we'll let you uh, go ahead and uh, and eat what you got. Let's see. I know, I know, I know. Don't, don't bolt. Alright. You're gonna, gonna let you get that out. You're gonna eat the substrate. Now, eating substrate is perfectly natural because there's no one there in the wild to pull the substrate out of their <laughs> mouth. So, people get over it. Uh, uh, it's a perfectly natural thing to do. Of course, the snake doesn't want to get a lot of substrate in their uh, gullet, uh, but this happens. Wow, look at it. It's already down in his stomach. Uh, oh, now it's time to go curl up under the rock, uh, the heat rock there. And yes, he's smart enough not to burn himself. 
The heat rocks actually these days are not like the heat rocks that I used when I was growing up as a teenager when dinosaurs roamed the earth, of course. <laughs> um, those got hot well over 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, the heat rocks of today only get to about 85 to 90 degrees and generally not enough to burn uh, any stupid snake. Well, this is Green Rocket Baby that's doing pretty well. It happens to be eating a gecko, unlike these geckos which I put in and it, it didn't eat. This one is going down the hatch. I don't know. Oh, there's the head. Oh, and the tail is just protruding from the mouth. If you can sneak along that corner, you can actually see a little snoot uh, uh, sucking down the mouth. Uh, gecko. Reminds me, I should probably order some geckos. because we still have some baby uh, insularis that are going to need to be fed, as well as uh, the male elapsidia. Very rare to see the the green rocket baby, I don't showcase her very much at all, uh, simply because she's always in hiding. But uh, she's two years old and still quite small and diminutive. Now these were the babies that were uh, theoretically clones and the green rocket did not breed with a male to produce them. So, they're not doing what, you know, all that great. They should be, you know, much bigger. I can show you that that one's two years old. They're, the one-year-olds that were born last May are the same size as this one. So this is, you know, it's not quite a normal snake. Uh, this one has decided it is not going to eat anymore uh, and just uh, wither up and die. Generally speaking, I offer it food. It refuses, but I don't. I'm not going to force feed it because it means that something's not quite right with the snake, and I will let nature uh, take its course. Now I'm hoping this little beastie will turn around so you can see it. I, as I said, it's it's a picky feeder. It's two years old and it's the size of a normal one year old um, but it's one of Rocket's clones and I really would like to see this snake reach adulthood whenever it gets around to it. It's not going to be happy because I'm going to uh, have to touch its tail one way or the other to close the door. I'll, uh, I'll put some water in the cage. Water dish. It's back there eating, but I don't think we're going to get the opportunity to uh, to see it, unfortunately. Let's see if I can gently move the leaf. And, oh, there you go. Caught you with your mouth full. There you go. 
Alright, so we're not going to disturb her any further because I don't want her to expel that gecko. So we'll leave her alone. Alright, so these are the green rockets babies. They were born in June of 21. Supposedly by parthenogenesis, which means that no males were involved in the process. Um, these are half the size of the ones that are, uh, are a year younger than these. Oh, well that's not a very good uh, strike technique you got there. Oh, okay, you're going to eat it ass end first. I told you these were mutants. Oh, no, you got it by the head. Good for you. Yeah, curled around and grabbed the head. Yeah, we could do that with your finger, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, people were asking about these, and this one decided to take a six-month hiatus from eating, and then all of a sudden started devouring geckos like there was no tomorrow. Um, the one in the cage next to it, who was, was eating right along from the beginning, now has decided that it doesn't want to eat. So, who in the hell knows what's going on with these guys, but uh, uh, they're still hanging in there. Like I said, they're much smaller than that big blue one that I showed you that may need a larger cage actually a couple of those guys need larger bins so I might move them over here to the racks in this room but um, yeah these uh, are hanging in there I'm pretty surprised uh, uh, however their presence is welcome uh, so we'll just continue feeding we'll go with the next one well, here's the uh, old girl of the bunch. She was an adult when she came in, wild caught, uh, uh, in 2016. And, and uh, she's generally feeding pretty well. But, uh, you know, she's starting to, uh, to show the age. You know, I feed her on a weekly basis when she wants something to eat. But you can see how thin she is. Um, yeah, not sure how much longer she'll, she'll last, but, um, you know, she, she had a good life here. That's all I can, uh, I can really say. Now, next door we have the rocket, <laughs> who's already enthusiastically going after the mouse. There you go, rocket. As you know, rocket had, uh, some babies uh, a couple years ago, they're sort of mutants because she wasn't with a male, so they're parthenogenic. Um, they're, you know, much older than the other babies I currently have, um, uh, and they're much smaller. They're just feeding on geckos. Uh, one took like six months off from feeding. I thought it was going to die. All of a sudden, out of the blue, I said, well, okay, I'll give it another try, and it took a gecko. Um, so you never can tell. That's why we keep trying here, uh, you know, until the bitter end, so to speak. But Rocket's doing well. She's feeding and uh, ready to go.